in time on a tradition can everybody see my screen yep someone say yes that's it because we can't see you now yes <laughs> right over to you chess to kick us off cool. okay well hi everyone and thanks for having us um i'm francesca but you can call me chess marsh um i currently work for NEPT, so i work in the digital agency world um and i'm a senior project manager Today we're going to be talking about the human side of delivery. So um, I have a little bit of a cough at the moment, which is sort of like a human element to this. So <laughs> I have to clear my throat. I'll put go on mute quickly. Um, but uh, Andy Tabra, um, do you want to introduce yourself? Yes, uh, I'm Andy. I uh, work at the co-op, so I'm a what's called a principal delivery manager there. So. Um, that means I work with delivery managers and help coach them to help coach their teams to uh, be the best they can be and, and continuously improve. And I work alongside Mr. Neil Vass. Oh, how smooth. Uh, I'm Neil. Uh, I, I was a principal delivery manager. I moved last year to be a uh, digital skills principal. So I'm helping with digital and agile ways of working with lots of uh, <coughs> what who that stuff's all new to. Cool. Okay. So what we uh, would like you to do, and it looks like many of you have done it already, is that um, if possible, please put your cameras on. Um, one of the things we want to talk about about being human is um, being present. Um, if you can, show your face. Applause is welcome. Uh, jazz hands, we've already seen that. It saves me. I was going to have to explain what that was. Someone's helpfully done it. And hit us with your emojis, questions, ideas, and comments. Please remind us you're there because in this online world, it's difficult presenting sometimes when you can't hear people or see people, especially as now we've got the screen on. So let's try and recreate the magic of a couple of years ago where we might even be in the same room and we could see you. So feel free to have your cameras on if you can uh, and join in in any way that you see fit. Uh, ask us questions and just be there and let us know you're there. So to the talk, why is this so important? So, so important, as I put, is what this is really about is being human is the um, is soft skills. It's what well, which we think should be rebranded hard skills. Th those are the skills that maybe, you know, over the, you know, if you go back 10, 20 years, these were the sort of skills that people used to uh, call for touchy feely. They were they weren't particularly valued, um, but I think over the last a sense, a, certainly in the last decade, and particularly in the last eighteen to, a month to two years, we now realise just how important these skills are, and being able to manage these soft skills, which are very hard, is the key to building good, healthy, productive teams, um, and that's what we're going to talk to you about today. So I'll start with a little bit of a background um, about how and behind that. So we actually worked at an agency in Chester called Reckless, um, where we worked together on delivery of projects. So we both always rated face-to-face -face conversations really highly and, and just saw how everyone reaped the benefits of actually talking to each other. Um, and we used to have a rule of face-to-face um, -face initial conversations. Um, talk through problems and ideas, phone calls for follow-ups and quick answers to small questions, and emails for more formal decisions or to gain clarification or confirmation. Um, and then we had Slack, so for more informal or quick responses. So we're always advocates of talking face-to-face, -face, arranging impromptu chats, and got people together wherever we overheard conversations of lots of questions or assumptions being made. So I think like all of us, it was always a very big part of our everyday working life to get people together and talk without laptops or phones. So we sometimes go for a walk to talk through a problem. We knew signs of hunger, so we get emergency snacks. Um, and at one stage, we even went through a period of turning off Slack. So we'd get people together. That was only six years ago, but it feels like such a long time now. Um, if we go on to the next slide, please, Andy. So here you can see the things that I used to love 
about being in an office. Um, so these were the days of sliding across the room on chairs to listen to conversations that might aid in upsells to take to clients, meerkatting over the desk to see collaboration between design and dev, having my eyes shut but my ears open to three different conversations happening at once. Daily stand-ups where everyone gathers into a room and is physically set up, uh, where conversations start and carry on as people leave the room talking and walking to get coffee or back to the desk. Um, and we have a chance to show our appreciation and support to our peers with thank you postcards and randomly buying a little treats or beers on a Friday afternoon. So we all know and live this and what's the point in me telling you something you already know? Well, although we've been living in this more remote world for around two years now, which is crazy, um, for most of us, it's still a very strange way to be working especially for those of us in delivery type roles, as the core of what we do is to get people together. So we've gone from those easy ways of talking and gathering people to this online version. And don't get me wrong, there are lots of pros of working this way, uh, but the hardest part I've found personally is the lack of natural reactions, um, facial cues and body language. So on to the next. Um, we live in this world now. Here's a lovely image of teams. Um, so you can see here we have part faces, no faces, and half a face. So it's, it's really strange to, to think that we're still expected to get the same results out of working together when we can only see half the team or sometimes not anyone. Um, so I just wanted to invite you all to have a little bit of a think about that. Um, what are the things that you miss from being in the office and things that have made it easier for you to be remote? And you can you can send us some comments in the um, messages here if you like. Um, I'll leave that with you for a moment and pass you over to Andy. <clears throat> okay, thanks Jess. We're gonna talk about three things today. So um, when we talk about what we mean by being human um we're going to talk about three things getting to know you so how we get to know our teams in this this very strange world that we live in now um how we create a safe environment for the people that we work with so we can get the best out of them um and how we keep it going uh, and the way we're going to do this is we're going to split it into two sections uh think of it as two case studies so chess is going to talk through her experiences uh, so we both work for retailers, so uh, but but quite different ones. Chess, uh, well, did work for a retailer when we first did this talk, but Chess will talk from more of a, a organisation with more of a commercial focus, but but still needing that human element uh, as any organisation and and team does. Uh, and I'll talk through it from the co-op, albeit a retailer, but more I guess more similarities with the civil service uh, in some ways. So Chess will be up first to talk about her experiences around those three things. Yeah, so getting to know you. Um, so we connect together, so we thrive together. It's a good statement. Um, if you go to the next slide. So I used to work at Foot Asylum um, last year, and um, it was really important to get to know how who people are what their experience is um, things that you'd probably naturally do when you walk into an office but doing that online was very different um so it, in the first instance i was new to a team but the team had been together for a few months before i joined um so i was under the understand um, the assumption of do people really want to go through getting to know each other again when they've already been working together for a few months? Um, but I decided to go for it anyway, because uh, I just thought it would really help me if I knew who these people were that I'm going to be working with for however long. So we put together this mirror board um, of who we are. So these are our profiles. So I, I actually timed this. I gave everyone 10 minutes, uh, had a visual timer, put some music on in the background and asked everyone to note down on the areas on here 
things that they liked, food that they liked, the best job that they had, um, places that they lived in, so that we can understand who these people are that are behind these screens that we talk to every day. Um, so after the 10 minutes, we had a few minutes to talk about the things that we put on here. And actually, it was really nice. Um, and people really appreciate this. Actually, they haven't really done anything like this before. Um, and they didn't know where each other lived or what they did in a past job before here. So it sparked conversations like, oh, I forgot about that. It's great. Or I lived there too. What year were you there? Um, we all had a chance to speak and listen to each other's stories. And the time went very quickly. So I had to get everyone onto the next part of agreeing on our roles and responsibilities. It was definitely a lot easier to do after we all knew each other a little bit more. I noticed in the days after this session that there were no longer awkward silences on calls, people felt comfortable questioning points on the sprint board, and the stand up became more chatty. And um, we were able to get back to the mirror board as a moment to remind them who we were or just some quick information about best food, things like that. So if you go on to the next slide. Creating a safe environment, I think this sets us up quite well for this. We have fun, we are inclusive, we value one another and our contributions, and we enjoy being with each other. On to the next slide. So this led us on nicely to what we do, so roles and responsibilities. What, does, what is everyone responsible for on this team? And who do I talk to if I have a question about something that I don't know the answer to? So we went on and put on here, on the left hand side, you can't see it very clearly on here, but you can kind of see uh, three tables. So on the left hand side, it was what we think you do. So everyone in the team got a chance to note down what other people do, what they think other people do. You're not allowed to comment on your own column. So as a delivery manager, I wouldn't put anything in there, but I'd put something in the engineer. And then a few minutes did do that. And then on the right hand side, it's what we agree we do. So we came together and said, right, so those are those those things are on the left, what everyone thinks others do. Are they the same as what ourselves think we do. Um, so it sparked up some conversations and um, also it made us realise that although we think, oh, am I doing a good job, a, a little bit of um, imposter syndrome in there, it's really reassuring that other people understand that that is your role. So we converged the two into one and um, said this is what we agree we do and on the far right hand side this is everyone's responsibility. We had things like um, leading stand-up, taking it in turns, um, quality assurance, everyone's responsible for that. And, um, you know, everyone's on understanding and responsible for what we're all trying to achieve as a team. And then on the bottom right, I decided to start some theme retros. So sometimes re retrospectives can be quite samey. Um, and to eliminate that monotonous um, effect. We now we now had uh, theme directories. You can actually find these. They're really good. The templates on Miro, and there's lots of templates out there. But it just helps the team um, to have a little bit more focus on what they're trying to achieve. Um, look back on what uh, what they've achieved in the past few weeks and anything they want to work on. excuse me, voice is going. <laughs> um, so yeah, so I even had a soundtrack to my Under the Sea theme and took requests. We had um, Yellow Submarine by the Beatles at one point. So trying to keep that element of fun into it really. Um, and then if we go on to the next slide. So <clears throat> I've spoken about a few things that we did as a team. Um, but there's a whole other group of people that you don't know right now. So it could be people in your department, people in your company, other departments. How do you get to know other people when you're sat in your office at home with no one else around you? Um, so I decided to join the social committee. When I say committee, uh, there's only two of us. 
um, but we were open to um, others joining if they needed to. So I set up a coffee morning. It was run every Thursday at 11. It was half an hour of everyone's busy week to get together, join a call, and um, just talk about anything that you want, really. <clears throat> so um, people were a little bit like, oh, I don't know what to talk about. So I set up themes. We had votes for themes each week, and this one was pets and plants. So we had um, everyone pictures of their pets and plants, talking about them on the call. We had breakout rooms so that people could just have a discussion. And it's really just to give someone, give people something to talk about within their breakout rooms. Oh, video's playing. I don't know what's happened there. We're looking at a different one. Sorry, got distracted. I saw a video playing. It's okay. Um, so if you go on to the next one, we did a few of these themes. What's in your fridge? Um, some people had two fridges. Some people put bread in their fridge. Um, and really just found out some really random facts about people that you wouldn't usually. We also gave away prizes. So we everyone sent in the pictures on Slack and then the most reactions um, won a prize and we had a wheel of prizes. So it would be random things like um, a cuddly toy. Uh, if you're lucky enough, you got an Amazon voucher. Um, if you go on to the next slide. Oh, and show us your desk. So you don't often see people's desks when they're working from home. You only see their faces. So behind the desk and uh, everyone sent in what their desk setup was and actually made everyone have a little tidy up <laughs> before they took these pictures. So lastly, um, I have actually changed jobs since I worked at Flood Asylum the last time I did uh, this talk. So I now work at Debt and this brings a whole other host of challenges when talking with people on your team or um, in the department. So the project team that I'm working on at the moment, we're based actually all over the world. And we created this mirror board to show our faces, what we do, our project roles, and where in the world we are. So we've got the UK, we've got Portugal, we've got Macedonia, and we've got Romania. So it makes a really interesting um, stand ups because we actually get to understand a bit more from different cultures as well, which is brilliant, love it. Um, so I think uh, I'm going to pass you back over to Andy now. Okay, thanks Jess. <clears throat> so um, I'm going to talk about the same th three things. So just to, re to remind you what we mean by getting to know you is that we connect with each other so we thrive together. Um, so a bit of context about my case study. Um, I'm, I'm sure some of you will remember the great storm that was IR35. Um, I'm not sure what it did for government departments, but it certainly ripped a, a significant hole through the teams that I was involved in, with some people leaving within a day or seven days of, an, of, a, of the co-op's final decision about how we treat our contractors and whether they're in or outside IR35. So while that was going on, our main engineering supplier in the area that I worked in uh, had served notice that we were going to leave. We had to find a new supplier uh, and we were having to onboard them at the same time as the old supplier was leaving, uh, all remotely and across the world with, uh, with people stationed all over the place. Uh, and while all of that was happening, uh, the expectation was that we maintain our delivery pace and honour our road map. Uh, commitments. So as you can imagine, it was a bit of a vortex. It was um, it felt like a very difficult time. Um, but what got got us through it and which would started the, um, the thought about this talk was focusing more on making people feel way, welcome and part of a team and part of the co-op over getting people up to date on on how we work and software and access to different things. We gave we gave e equal weight to those two things. And I'm going to tell you about how that worked. So one thing we had to do, which Chess touched on, and I'm sure you've done as well, was we had to replace what would normally take, you know, six months, and that getting to know people by having a chat, going to lunch, just little bits of information here and there. You have to turbocharge that charge that relationship building, which is strange because you end up doing things like getting people uh, online together in a meeting to ask them things about themselves 
uh, in one go, which you would never do in real life. You would never get 30 people together in a room and say, right, tell me something about your life. So, you know, strange times uh, call for, for, for very different approaches. So what we did was we combined several ways of doing it, some of which Chess has mentioned. Um, there's a, obviously the classic manual of me that we got to understand how people prefer to work and a bit about themselves. We did something called Life Highlights Game, where you the whole idea is to get people to talk about something, things that really matter to them in the, that have happened in their life, um, which they then share with a group, which is a great way to, as I said, to, to understand what matters to people. If you understand what matters to people, then that gives you a gateway into, into, into building a good relationship with them. A game called Commonalities, where we we get into we we arrange ourselves in groups given uh, based on a question like who has brown eyes, who sp speaks more than one language, who's lived in more than one more than two countries. The idea being to show that that no matter how who we are, there will be someone on our team that has something in common with us. Um, we did what's our favourite food game? Chess mentioned that that was the most uh, hotly debated. Uh, event I've ever been involved in. Uh, it told us a lot about the people we were working with. Most importantly, touching on what Chess said was people from all around the world. Uh, we had, I think, seven or eight different countries. So understanding a bit about the food meant you understood a bit more about the culture and it gave you, um, again, insight into another world, you know, a completely different place where this person comes from and what's important to them and their, and, and, and their culture. So that that's starting to enrich our um, our working lives. So we got to know a lot more about each other. What we're drinking today uh, is not alcohol. Uh, it was about bringing, uh, Chess mentioned something similar about bring, bring along your drink and tell us what it is you're drinking. And, and it's amazing. You think people will turn up in tea and coffee and you actually find out. Um, there's a whole range of drinks out there and, and a lot of them will be to do with where people live. Uh, will determine what they drink. So it's another way of finding out about people's lives beyond uh, work. Um, we had one where we asked the team to come up with what's the one question we should ask anyone who want, wants to join our team? So we could find out whether they're aligned with our values. And it's a very good way to find out what our values are. If they, Even if they're not documented, you can get a feel for them based on the questions that people want to ask because we would have to explain why we chose that question as well. And we did that in pairs across two different teams. And the whole whole point of this was to make everyone feel part of the team and part of the co-op, because we had 20 uh, people who were from a supplier to join a team of around about 40. So at least half our team were from a supplier and we had to create this environment within a space of a couple of months. Um, and that was the time it took to onboard everyone. So the evidence that we got back from was this working that we heard back directly from team members. They felt part of the co-op and they felt valued. Our team health survey scores were were excellent, considering the amount of people that were joining and the disruption, as you'd imagine, that would cause. Got great feedback from delivery managers and tech leads on the team about how the team was gelling very quickly. Um, and we heard back from our the supplier based on the interviews that they do away from us. So we had no influence over them at all that people felt part of the co-op. And that had always been an historic problem. And I'm not, it might be one that you're aware of where people don't feel part of a team because they're a contractor or a supplier. So creating a safe environment. So just to repeat what we mean by that, we have fun, we are inclusive, we value one another and our contributions, and we enjoy being with each other. So what we did and what I led on was, you know, do fun and be happy. I know doing fun sounds awful, but it's not. It's, you can create these things through practice. So we'd start our meetings with a positive round of chat, always making sure that we filled you know, our, our events together with positivity, make it starting from a good point. We, we approached our meetings looking for what will make you happy from them. Uh, a very wise person I worked with told me about this if, about six months ago is go into a meeting thinking, what can I get from it that's gonna make me happy? And it really will have an influence on how you approach that meeting. Even with those difficult stakeholders that we sometimes dread Focusing on what will make you happy will mean you go into that meeting in the right frame of mind. You're not de not defensive. And if at best you're neutral and ready to hear what other people have got to say and practice being happy. You know, there's there's a mindset to this. It's it doesn't mean you have to like, be jumping up and down excited, but make sure that when you talk to people, you know, you, you project a positive uh, and upbeat um, 
persona. You don't have to be it all the time, but work on being happy and, and trying to help the people around you to feel happy as well. Um, even down to telling, well, I've become quite well known in the co-op for telling bad dad jokes because it's a way of breaking down barriers. Um, when I first had to join uh, a team of 20 people that I didn't know, the way that I thought I'd break the ice was to tell a bad joke. And it got a bit of a laugh and a, quite a few roll, eyes rolling, but it gave me a start to start building a connection with people that I was prepared to be vulnerable and tell a rubbish joke because I wanted people to know that I was, you know, I wanted to connect with them. And, and humour is a good way of doing that. And that's the beauty of bad jokes. They don't have to be good as long as they make people groan or their eyes roll. And what this did, when, once I did it, after a week or so, someone else said, can I tell the joke this time? And then it started from there where I stepped back and it, I didn't do it anymore. I, I was there as sort of like the substitute, but other people wanted to do it and, and took great and pride in, in making people groan. But it started a team spirit and it became something that when I left the team, they've carried it on. Um, and that's on two different teams. So it's their way of, of, of making each other feel welcome and, and injecting some fun into their events. Um, we also added music as well. Um, through that joke, um, eventually people wanted to find their own way of, of bringing fun and happiness to our stand-ups, retros or any other meeting that we had. Um, we had uh, one of our delivery managers uh, revealed to us that he could play the French horn. He played it in orchestra and played us out at the end of stand-up one Friday into the weekend. Um, another team would take it in turns to pick songs to end, uh, end their stand-up. Um, so everyone got a chance to choose the music they wanted to hear. Uh, and that was also a good clue for everyone. We're going to play the music now that the stand-up was ending, because sometimes that can be a problem where they just peter out. Uh, and my favourite is when one team was starting stand-ups with Get Up Stand Up by Bob Marley. That was the, the cue when you joined the team's call that the meeting was, the stand-up was about to start proper. And all this stemmed from one bad dad joke. What we also focused a lot on was the, the power of language. So it's things like using the word we, the power of we, the power of us, the power of ours, like our business rather than the business. Using those words are, they're, they're by definition, they're inclusive. So the more we use them, the more we make people feel part of a team. It's worth pointing out with the language side, thinking more about language and how, how we could use it to make people feel included. It did make me rethink the dad jokes because some of them were based on puns that were difficult for people who speak English as second and sometimes a third language. So that, that made me pick better jokes, but also made me think, well, let's ask people from, the, from other places who are speaking English as a third language to tell jokes because they'll tell them at the level which makes sense to them and that they, they can comprehend um, and they feel comfortable um, sharing with a group. Uh, it also made us think a lot about the euphemisms and slang that we use in the UK because some of these things don't mean anything to, to someone who's based in uh, Portugal or uh, Singapore or India. So that really helped us make sure that we, we used um, clean and understandable language where, where we could, but also it made it fun sometimes to teach people uh, slang. So you'd find people from other countries starting to adopt the slang and it became part of the team's uh, vocabulary. Um, we worked a lot on showing, you know, show you care is a mantra of the team. So anything positive, positive actions and great work. We've got a, a Slack channel set up called Kudos, where you can submit um, a, a Kudos for a, a particular person or a couple of people. And whenever we, you know, something was worth pointing out, we'd encourage everyone to do that. But I role model that by doing it as often as, as I can when someone has done something good so that other people see this is what you should do as well. And we also have a town hall where we, we could give people a, it's called a fist pump, a uh, bump, sorry, where we could, um, you could point out or call out something great that someone's done to our team. And that was every two weeks. We also extended that show you care by a thoughtful onboarding. So whenever someone new starts, uh, we'd make sure we got together as much information, relevant information, so they didn't drown. But what do they need to know on day one? We'd send them a really nice welcoming e email to make them feel welcome from the very start. We'd pair them with someone on the team who um, 
the last person who joined if it was possible because they would have the best understanding uh, and would be able to explain it in a sort of very relevant and timely way. Um, we'd also ask their feedback on what can we improve based on you? What have you seen? What, what can you bring in from your last job that would help us? And we'd implement at least one of those ideas. And one thing we did do, I know cameras on can be controversial, but when someone's joining your team and it's their first day and they've been introduced, having your cameras on is a welcoming thing to do. I mean, imagine joining a team where you're faced with blank screens and you don't hear people's voices for a few days and you don't see their face for a week or two. You know, it's it's about the other person's needs in this situation and making them feel welcome so they can join the team and feel part of it from day one. Uh, we sh show you care by being vulnerable, um, showing vulnerability and, and empathy. So we encourage people to talk about their well-being and encourage others to do so as well. Regularly reminding people that um, no one knows the company they work for, their health, their mental well-being. So make sure that you look after yourself. We practice uh, empathy, so making sure you so you place yourself in the shoes of the of the people that are on your team, so you can understand their worldview. You know what's going on for that person. What emotions might they be feeling? How might they look at this point of view? What how might they meet, might they be experiencing this situation? What challenges are they facing, so that you can have a better understanding of, of the people that you work with. Um, Normalise asking for help. I can't stress that enough. If if you're a leader on a team, and I think if you're in delivery, you, you are in that role, is normalise asking for help so that everyone else feels comfortable for doing it. Uh, and the last thing is make all of these things normal at your stand-ups, meetings, team events, so that it, you know, it, it's okay you role model these behaviors and by doing so you allow other people to feel comfortable saying no i don't know asking for help and being clear about when they're not in a good place and maybe they need a bit of time away today and show you care by following up what people share with you i mentioned before about the activities we did if someone tells you something and it's important share and honor that what, what you've learned you know, follow it up, Slack message, team call, phone call, whatever it takes. Make sure if someone has shared something you, with you that's important, remember it, but also um, let that person know that you've heard it and then remember it in conversations that come up because you remembering it shows that you've heard it and it's important. And it's in, if it's important to that person and you remember it, that goes a long way to building a very effective relationship. And, and what I think is it's like being a human CRM. Remember what people tell you and make sure that you're able to um, you use that in the best way possible to build a relationship. It could even just be remembering someone that someone's birthday is coming up or that they've been out recently or that they've got a child that's been ill. You showing you care goes a long way to being uh, human and building a good team. And like the evidence of all of that was we had improved team health, uh, it improved our delivery metrics as well. So our throughput increased, lead and cycle times were reduced. Um, improve confidence with key stakeholders, which was absolutely critical for our team. Um, we were dealing with a very difficult situation and all of this meant that there, it looked to the outside world as if nothing had changed, yet so much had. And it really meant that we had the confidence of stakeholders to leave us alone because they started to trust us that we could do our job. And, you know, probably most importantly, we had team stability that meant that we had, we had the platform upon which to do great work. And we retained staff and we retained people from our suppliers as well. No one wanted to leave. We had a very stable team and we hadn't up until that point and been very high levels of turnover. And we managed to make it stable during a really difficult period. So we're going to go on to how we keep it going. I'm going to hand back to Chess now. Thanks, Andy. Yeah, so I think you covered it pretty well. We um, need to keep this going and to do that, that you know, turning what we do into mindset and applying this to our team. Um, just try and keep it simple, but keep it going. Um, you can do things like Andy said, you know, just follow up on things. One tip that I've got that I've started doing recently is I've got a diary, um, old school, actually on my desk. So I've got a page per day um, and I just write little bits down because my memory is not that great. But um, just writing a little bit down about someone. So, you know, Sean's off today and he said he's going to see his family. I would just say, have a great weekend. You know, just little bits like that. It doesn't have to be a lot um, to keep it going. 
absolute change um, for keeping the mindset of everyone turning up with good intentions and asking questions that you need informing about. So not leading questions, but questions you actually need to know the answers to. Hope. So something you can do to keep it going is um, having that positive energy and hoping that's going to go well. A democratic approach of ways of working. So gathering people and checking in with them um, that if there's anything you can do to make their life easier. And be kind, practice them, empathy. Um, Andy actually said he has a checklist for this. Do you still have that checklist, Andy? I can share. I, re I just rattled some of the questions off earlier, but we can share that after yeah. a bit of help. Great. Okay, thanks. Okay, so those are the sort of the mindset. What's the what to do? So what what are the things that you can do to keep this? Once you've got that environment and you've got to know people, is it's nurture connections and connect people. So I put think LinkedIn and Twitter, so like you know, creating that sort of same energy and and, and vibe within your organisation around you know making formal connections, but create informal connections for others. So you're bringing people together especially in a remote world, they're not going to meet face to face. There's no water cooler that they can bump into each other at. So where you get where you get to know people you think would get on because they work in similar things or they've got similar interests, connect them. Um, create corridors between teams uh, and departments so information for, uh, flows freely. You know, use, use your informal network to build connections with other teams so that you can help people in your team get to know other people. Um, and make sure that information flows freely between your team and others, which I'm going to touch on in a second in another slide. So this is a shared data. This is um, we shared our team data and our team health with everyone, all the stakeholders outside of our team. And we did it. We were publishing our data because we wanted to show that we were prepared to be uh, held to account or that other people can keep us honest. Uh, it meant that we Whenever things weren't going well, we had to come up with a plan. We had to act, follow up and work together to improve. And when things were going well, we could share that with people on the outside. And it also encouraged that, you know, one of the biggest problems I think we have at work is when people hold on to information. So if you're prepared to willingly share information about your team, um, then it will. It's, it's role modeling what other people should do, too. And, you know, it means that, that you can't. You can't criticise maybe leadership, for example, if they're not sharing information with you, if you're not sharing information the other way. Um, and this is an example of a nudge, like publishing. It's like telling people you're going to lose weight. Once you tell people, people are going to ask you. And there's also that now you've published it, you feel that you have to do it. It's a nudge to make you act by sharing the data about your team and how you're performing. Um, Make all your team events, so your stand ups, your retros, planning, make those human centred. So make sure that you're bringing out the, there's a human element to this work. It's not just um, you're not just there to do planning. Make sure that you involve everyone, make it as inclusive as you can. Um, also make use of things like your retros to improve your environment. How can we make it better? How can we make sure that we know each other better as people? How can we improve our team health? How can we improve the interactions within our team? How can we, uh, you know, th those interactions are absolutely critical to us in delivery and how we do our job. So let's focus as much time on that as we do maybe other aspects about the way we work and visualising our work in progress and all of those things that we do naturally. Let's also give time over to making these things more human. Um, so there's a gratuitous shot of me at the allotment. Um, cultivate the space between your team and other teams as well. All of this work that we've talked about you need to do it outside your team as well. There's no point, op, you know, there's no point um, optimizing your team if the teams around you, you don't have the same quality of interactions. And this is like that quote there. This is something that I, I wrote to try and explain this. And I think hopefully it captures it is that psychological safety of the organization is never the sum of the teams. It's the safety and quality of the interactions between your teams. So if you bring the whole wider teams together and show we trust each other, we make our interactions a safe place too. Um, you also need to give yourself time to do this. So you need Slack. Um, 
if you don't have time to invest in in relationships then they're not going to develop so make sure you put some time aside save some of your capacity so you can focus on the human side even if it's just half an hour a day so that you can follow up with things that you hear in stand up things that you hear in meetings where someone maybe isn't contributing or they've got their camera off and they don't normally have that or someone's told you they're not feeling that great if you invest that half an hour a day that's going to pay pay back and um, tenfold you know people really will trust you just a just a message to say are you okay really makes a big difference and um, but if you haven't got the time to do that because you're always rushing around and you don't carve out time then then you can't expect those relationships to improve so you've got to invest time and protect your capacity to do that and then the last uh, thing is about spreading the concept of citizenship so um, again I, I've try to come up with what what we mean by that i mean the way to think of it is if you're you know if you're a citizen it means something doesn't it you you have rights and obligations but you get those in exchange uh you, you your rights and obligations and you performing those gives you the benefits of being part of a wider group and getting that balance right between individual and team is absolutely critical as it says that last sentence we give and take an equal measure and that's what being a good citizen is and that's we think is the key to being what being human is and being a good team member is all about. So is this you, Jess? I think it is, isn't it? Brilliant. Thank you, Andy. Um, there's some really, really important topics that came up there. And I think someone's just mentioned on the chat there that spending time on the people in your business buys lo loyalty too, which is another reason that is time well spent. I like that comment. Um, so the, the three things that we want to talk to you about today was getting to know you, creating a safe environment and how to keep it going. Um, I think we have covered it quite well, um, but uh, I think we can accept any questions later on. Also, um, feel free to add us. I think LinkedIn is probably the easiest way to get connected. And Andy's going to leave you with one final thought. Yeah, so that's the social connection. So that, that this thing we talk about being human. This is this is um this quote's actually from um a medical paper. So it's it's based on evidence that you know our, our connections can lower anxiety and depression and regulate emotion and improve self-esteem and empathy. And when you think of it like that, that that what that can do to your team, if you can remove these things and make people feel better about themselves and be more empathetic, then that's an incredible thing that you can do uh, and will make your team more productive and happy. So um, I've just realised that just seen the time and it's seven minutes. So um, Neil, I think we've uh, we haven't got the time to go through. I'm really sorry. That's OK. We've got a super flexible uh, application of this. I think probably first of all, it's a round of applause. <laughs> That was a fabulous tour of ideas and talks. I really appreciate it. Um, if we've got a few minutes, I'll talk you through. You're never quite sure how much good stuff will come out, what time the talk will start. So I didn't know if this would be a 20 minute thing or a five minute tour. It's more like the five minute one. If you've got a few minutes, uh, this is hopefully an idea that you'll be able to steal and use in your own sessions in future if you like it. There's a board here that you should all have access to say board out of habit it's a presentation um, and i'll give you a look at it on here um, so a challenge when there's i think you had 70 odd people in the room at one point there if you say any questions you'll only hear from the three people who managed to to get their ideas out first and that's not always the best ideas you want to hear so liberating structures if you've seen those are fabulous alternatives to any questions to give people a space to talk and um, if you've never heard of them before definitely go and look it up there's all of them but i'll give you the quickest look at a variation on one of them called one two four all so the idea is first of all have a think often when you've just heard a hundred different ideas and somebody says what do you think or you got any questions your answer is i'm not sure there's so much spinning around so the one part of one two four all is think yourself and write down and i look if you go down from slide seven onwards grab your own slide we'll just do it super quick grab your own slide whatever one you like and put your name on it here's mine 
And this is just a chance to think through. If we had more than five minutes, you'd get a couple of minutes to think about it. I'll have these up on the thing. Grab a slide, put your name on it. If you find somebody else there, move on. What stood out for you in that talk? Like what was an idea there that you think you're going to take and use? Uh, and what else did it make you think of? There was loads of great ideas in the chat. What's something else you've heard about or, or you'd, you'd suggest trying? And if you type it down, uh, I'll let everyone like take a copy of this. You can look through it later. You might be able to share some ideas. Just one or two bullet points there. What stood out for you there? And what's something else it made you think of? Hang on, can somebody not access Google Docs? <laughs> Is that true? Um, I, don't I worry. suspect most yeah, of us can't. Don't worry. Okay. The next thing I was going to say was, it's surprisingly hard to get 1240 working. The last time we tried to use it, we found out at the last minute, the idea was you write your thing down, then you go into pairs in a breakout room and discuss each other's ideas. And we found out breakout rooms weren't working in that remote setup. So we did a silent 1240, which is really fun. <laughs> you do your slide. And if I'd written things here, I would copy them on to slide two and we'd type to each other, which is really good for uh, introverts. It's really good for not having to do breakout room management. You can chat back and forth to each other. You can come up with ideas and paste them in and then type to each other. <laughs> Shall we go to slide 11? And people will type back and forth. It's an interesting variation on the normal 1240. It's not going to work at all here in five minutes and with no access to Google Slides. <laughs> so that's an idea. Feel free to steal it. Uh, I will send some screenshots of the slides if you want to see how it works. But for now, you'll just have to imagine what that would have felt like with more time and less restrictions on Google. That's all from me. Did anybody have one question, one thank you, one thing to say to wrap up the meeting? Nobody. Well, I'd well I'd like to say thank you very much for all three of you for for the talk. Uh, I think as you can see from the. Uh, highly engaged um, chat that's been going on. Actually, people might not have been speaking, but they have been engaging and talking in the chat an awful lot. So um, that's always a good sign. So I will say thank you very much for coming along. I think possibly not quite our first external speaker, but people from outside the government was really valuable. Um, two, could I just mention two things to you? You can see Andy's um, visual record of what's been going on there. Um, yeah, I've got you. I've got you spotlighted, uh, Andy. Um, it says Marcus. It's actually Andy. Um, uh, and you, you're on mute if you wanted to comment. Um, I've posted in the chat uh, a Mentimeter poll. If you could all take the, uh, just a moment. It only takes a couple of seconds to do Mentimeter. To give a little vote on um, what you thought of today and any comments. People always appreciate feedback. Um, as you know, it's really, really valuable. Um, we will get the video um, posted and you can share that. Next time it's going to be Andy teaching visual facilitation. Are you teaching visual facilitation, Andy? Yeah, yeah, we'll do a demo and there'll be some hands on uh, visual thinking fun. Uh, just to have an introduction, really um, complimentary with lots of the stuff that we've been talking about today. And I have to say, huge thank you to the team for that presentation. So one, one of our values as a company is first be human. So this has really been right up our street. So thanks very much. Excellent. Thank you very much. And we've had um, Andy, Neil and Chess. We've had a few requests to share your slides. Can we share your slides on our on our website, Delivercon website? Yeah, I think Andy's talking, but you're on mute. Sorry, it was on, it was off. Oh, come on. Yeah, you're here now. I can hear you now. You can. Yeah. Oh, no, yes. You're back on mute, Andy. I don't know what's going on, but yeah, we we'll be happy to share the slides with you. <laughs> Fabulous. Yeah, I've done it. I've put them in there. I put there's a blog post about this that summarizes this. There's a podcast as well, and there's the slides.
that's that's amazing thank you very much and thank you for coming along and thank you yeah. for everyone else for turning up and coming to watch and we'll see you all in four weeks time thank, thank you everyone. thanks everyone thanks so much. Thank you. Bye. Bye. cheers Bye.